Welcome to the Mothering with Jesus podcast, where we are real and raw about the ups and downs of motherhood and where we rally together to become the mothers that God intended us to be. Today, we are joined by our guest, Megan Lunt. Megan lives in Arizona. She has two small children, a three-year-old and a one-year-old. Her husband is an electrical engineer, and Megan is a deep thinker, and she is a young women's president in her inner, inner city ward. Megan is very open and real, and I know you're going to get something out of this podcast, so I can't wait for you to this episode is brought to you by Oliveda. Did you know that a large percentage of your skincare is actually filled with water? And when we add water to a product, we also have to add preservatives. And these preservatives can be irritating and damaging to your skin. Oliveda is waterless beauty made with clean, natural ingredients. I have been using Oliveda since October of last year, and I have noticed a drastic difference in my skin. My overall skin tone is so much better and I am just glowing and I'm excited for you to glow as well. Hop on the link in the show notes to purchase and you can always direct message me on my Instagram, Mothering with Jesus podcast, and we can set up a skincare routine specific to your skincare concerns. Megan, tell us a little bit about you. I was stalking your Instagram last night because oh, no. I always try to investigate and see who I'm chatting with so I can have some points of conversation. And we have to talk about the very most important thing that I saw, which uh -oh. was <laughs> oh, no. you and your husband were Adam and Millie in a seven brides for seven brothers play. <laughs> uh, girl, I was six months pregnant during that nice yeah, yeah so i'm so thankful i am obsessed with musical theater obsessed um ask me anything you want to know about musical theater and i will know it like that's crazy. amazing and um <laughs> and i remember so like through the years kyle would talk about like his musical theater experiences he he comes from a very musical family a lot of his musical experiences specifically with like musicals and plays on a stage were like not super great he just preferred like being in a choir being in a band kind of thing you know dave bowman he does art for the church uh, I don't know if you've heard of him. Name rings the bell. So he's in Kyle's parents' ward in Snowflake. He's this is a call and he's like, this is super out of the blue, but do you guys want to come be Adam and Millie? And that was so fun. And we had so much fun doing it. At the end, he goes, that was your one. Please don't ever ask me to do that again. I said, I thought I was getting zero. <laughs> I'm so thankful <laughs> I got one. <laughs> That's it was amazing. Magical. His way. I'm going to stop talking about musical theater and not bring it up starting now for the rest of the podcast because oh man I don't so stop. good though i watched seven brides for seven brothers just a bajillion times growing up and it's my so whole good. family knows all the songs we are not musical at all but i i just watched that probably daily it's so <laughs> as good. a young child oh, it was so good i got to like see him walk down the the aisle of the audience towards the stage and singing his heart out and oh man it was great Bless her beautiful hide. <laughs> yep. Yep. So good. So good. Okay, so you have two little people right now? Yes, I have two little people. Magnus is two and a half. He turns three the day of Thanksgiving this year. And then oh, cool. MJ is one on the seventh. So cool. literally like ten days away or something like that. And I feel like I still have two babies that are three months old. I they are my babies in my mind i am so i don't i don't know how to cope with having like toddlers <laughs> You're my baby. it's really crazy how fast it goes <laughs> well, and like everybody says that i remember i mean everybody says it's crazy how fast it goes and so i've tried really hard throughout all of being a mom to like soak it in put the phone mm -hmm. away play with the kids be present look them in the eye talk to them. like every single thing that you can do to be present and be in the moment I was doing and it's still it's still it's going so bad 
<laughs> I love that. Well, at least you'll have no regrets, even though it's going fast. You'll know that I you did everything so. you could to try to slow it down. I hope so. I hope I was a teacher for a while and now I get to be in my stay at home mom era, which is a huge blessing. So that is a huge blessing to be a stay at home mom because it's not the case for everybody. So that's so awesome that you get to yeah. be there. This podcast is going to be fun because Megan has come up with just some interesting questions that are just going to strike up an interesting conversation here. Let's go with this one. Let's talk about you obviously have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. I love those ages. That's so fun, Mm -hmm. but so busy. People always say the days are really long. The years are short. And I feel like that is 100% true, especially in those little toddler phases. They're so busy. They're just exploring and learning so much every day. So it really is a magical time, but it can be long. Yeah. (laughs) So tell us about like what you're, what are you doing amidst all the busyness to Ah, spend time with God? That is a hard question, but a great question. Um, I actually feel like my answer is going to be so different from all of the podcasts that you've had so far. Well, good. I I love that. I hope to be the most relatable thus far (laughs) because I, that is my number one struggle right now. I would say for 26 years of my life, I am 27. (laughs) So literally a year ago when I got my calling, um, it it like opened up my heart to feel the spirit more. um, And I needed to seek the spirit more. But before that, There was never a reason to have an increased closeness with the Holy Ghost before in my life. My baby was little enough that, and and I had Kyle around enough that I didn't really have any like big enough hardships to like put it all on the Lord and learn to lean on Christ because I had nothing left. Um, and and I still don't think that I can really say that I've experienced that, but. I'm going to say, unfortunately, even though that's a really sad word to put there, I feel that foreboding. As I have more kids and as the overwhelm builds, I'm either going to learn to lean on Christ slowly through it all, or I'm going to have a big breaking point where I just Mm -hmm. toss up my hands and leave it to Jesus. And that's the way it is from then on out, which I, you know, I look forward to and I'm excited for because I've grown closer to Jesus over the last year. And I do attribute that to my calling. Um, Are you still women's president? Yes, yes, still young's president. Um, and that whole the the uh the way that my ward functions and the young women's in the of my young women's group functions is very different than what I grew up in a big ward. And so spending time with the Lord um looks like for me um being present and learning to slow down Mm -hmm. and showing gratitude for those moments and uh, what what I say in my mind is, what would Jesus have me do with my five minutes? Because I think about, oh, I have in my day, I have all the things and I want to do all the things and what am I going to do and whatever, whatever. And, and, I, and I worry about all the things and I'm like, okay, stop, hold on. <laughs> Let's just focus on the next five minutes or the next 10 mm-hmm. minutes or the next activity. And I don't even have to think about my to-do list or my wants for today. What does Heavenly Father or Jesus Christ want me to do with the next five minutes? And, um, and I'm going to say that that is prayer because I have to stop and think and ask Jesus, what do you want me to do for, with my next five minutes? Um, which leads me to my last thought. (laughs) I have been very uncomfortable with prayer a lot of my life. Um, I have a really negative self voice. Um, and any time that I begin a prayer, my thoughts immediately go to, you are not worthy to pray. Stop. Go figure it out yourself. And so mm-hmm. I've, I've like leaned away from prayer a lot in my life um, because of that um, and keeping them very formal and gratitude based rather than focusing on what is the, mm-hmm. the comforting aspect and, you know, the that Jesus didn't just die for our mistakes and our sins, but the atonement is the comforting aspect. And I'm just kind of ignoring that gift from Jesus. And so I'm kind Mm -hmm. of having to learn that part of that. And that I think that's how I spend time with God. And unfortunately, it's not a lot of scripture reading right now, but listening to conference talks, 
um, I try to listen to my scriptures, it's really hard to know anything of what's going on or hear anything. So I'm trying to focus on listening to conference talks and then getting comfortable with prayer. That question is so powerful. What would God have me do with the next five minutes? Yeah, I think that is such a great way to slow down, be present, and make your day meaningful because it can be really easy to get to the end of the day and just be like, what did we do today? The mom guilt and the anxiety because when it's my wants and my to-do list getting done, there will always be things that don't get done and that I wanted to do better. But then when I'm like, oh, I did, I did, there were three times today that I list, that I asked Jesus, what am I going to do with my five minutes? And then I did it. And that kind of just wipes away all of the, which I've experienced my fair share of mom guilt. <laughs> Those moments, I'm like, okay, success. <laughs> we're done. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's speak a little bit to, just like you said, prayer has been uncomfortable for you. I'm sure you're not the only one out there who feels that same way. So yeah. I love um, your advice of just making it more gratitude based, that that feels more comfortable for you right now. And as someone who has a tendency to be more negative to yourself, mm -hmm. what advice would you give to somebody else, to a good friend who just came and says, I feel the same way? Write down your prayers. Easy answer. I finally have a short answer for something in my life. Write down your prayers. <laughs> I love it. I, I don't do it daily. But when I write down my prayers, it is a powerful thing. I'd say it's a therapy session with yourself and God. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, if you're listening, it can be rather than just getting your thoughts out. But I feel like it's kind of forced to be a therapy session between you and God because your thoughts, you, your thoughts have to catch up with your hand. So there are mm -hmm. moments where God can speak when you're finishing writing, but your, your mind is open because you're not quite to the next part. And then I've also viewed um, the podcasts that I listen to anyway. I'm sure there are, you know, billions upon billions of podcasts, but the podcasts that I listen to are like therapy sessions. I love writing down the prayers. It just forces me to slow down, to be present, to finish my prayer without being distracted by something else. Yeah. And then, well, and then I, go ahead. And I'm always surprised how much I feel coming back. Like how much yeah. revelation and insight and direction, Definitely. like he really is listening. I always know that. But when I write down my prayers and listen for the answers and I write down the answers that I feel, yep. like he really is listening. I was about to say, you have the paper right there to write down the answers. If mm -hmm. I know there are some people that like, they're really good at remembering things or like their revelation turns into action so quickly that like they don't feel the need to like write down their their revelation love that for them that works for mm -hmm. them i forget things at the drop of a hat and so i'm like me too yeah and then the other positive thing i really appreciated your verbiage of saying if a friend came and said i'm struggling with the same thing what would i say um the other thing is um when my inner voice starts to be negative about myself what comes out on the page is god i'm feeling this way and it feels so much more like I, like I'm using that part of the comforting part of the atonement that I was talking about when I'm turning to God with those feelings, rather than pushing God away and Jesus's atonement for those things and saying, mm -hmm. "I'm so bad because of this thing. I don't deserve you." Mm -hmm. And then when, as soon as I write it out, it's like I'm opening that up to them, mm -hmm. them being God and Jesus. Yes, I agree. It's just like, it's like choosing, okay, do I want to listen to Satan or do I want to listen to God? Because we know that like, you know, the gifts of the spirit are like peace and love and joy. And we're going to feel those things as we're choosing to, to pray, to listen to conference talks, to listen to our scriptures, you know, things that bring us closer to God. We're going to feel those feelings. Whereas if we believe Satan's lie, Definitely. Because that's what it is, that we are unworthy or that God does not want to talk to us for whatever reason that may be. Yeah. Then we are choosing to just shut them out, like you said, and yeah. kind of yeah. stay in this dark place. So I would agree that whatever you can do to try to not yeah. shut them out and try to let yeah. them in. I know that's easier said than done, but definitely there helpful. That leads to another thought. There have been a couple of experiences in my life 
I can't even remember. Like, I just remember the feeling. I could not even tell you where I was or how old I was or like, like there's no memory. <laughs> it's just like the memory of a feeling of letting Jesus into the parts of myself that I'm afraid of. And I have a belief, this is kind of like a conspiracy theory. <laughs> I'll preface this with that. I have a conspiracy theory that everybody has deep, dark, hidden places of themselves. Most people don't even know about them. Mm. And and whenever like your brain gets close to them, we are like you we shoot the other direction. Like we will mm-hmm. do anything to avoid those places. But anytime that I've either let myself get close to there and definitely when I let Jesus get there is when I feel closest to Jesus and understanding what the atonement is and why he did it and understanding who Jesus Christ is and his purpose and how I can be like it. You know, I posted that to my Instagram story a few times where like a quote will remind me of this thought that I have of one of my soapboxes about the deep dark places. And it's funny because like Instagram is so like happy go lucky cutesy and it'll be like a cute quote and I'll be like, find a way to let Jesus into your deep dark places. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I sound like this crazy person that's like <laughs> that place that you're afraid of just like take Jesus there in your body and show him <laughs> there's, there's a lot going on in our bodies that we are not aware of and mm-hmm. like our emotions display themselves in like physical symptoms you yes. know like I'm really into holistic medic- medicine and mm-hmm. just like viewing the body as a whole just like spiritually emotionally and like how all our symptoms are so connected yeah. right yeah. i'm an empath and so i very easily take on other people's emotions like mm-hmm. to a point of being unhealthy i think it it can be a gift if you're just using it to be able to serve that person and feel how uh-huh. they're feeling right mm-hmm. but if it if that emotion becomes like consuming to you and i'm taking yeah. on literally thousands of people's emotions yep. all day then yep. Like I am so bogged down and, and so just like you're saying, I love that about like, that's what I've been doing is like sitting down with myself, deep breathing and letting Christ, like handing all those things that are mine that aren't serving me or aren't mine and aren't serving me. And I literally just say like, okay, I, I invite the savior to take these. I'm going to hand these to him because it's not serving me. And I want to be like my best version so that uh-huh. I can serve my family and everybody around me, you know? I love that. So I love that. I love what you're saying of just letting Christ in to those deep parts of us that he really can heal. You know, like we think, like it reminds me of the quote that talks about um, study of the gospel can, what is it? Study of the gospel can change behavior faster than behavior can, can change behavior. The study of behavior. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That one, like it reminds me of that where like we have therapists and we have all of these like modalities to heal, which I a hundred percent believe in, but also like, let's not forget Christ and all that because he is the great healer. Yes. I love hearing from the therapists that their advice is you can get much farther much faster using christ and mental health professionals rather than just mental health professionals in tandem with that quote like i i think i saw something it honestly might have been on your instagram somebody that had that quote and then they said i suggest using both and it was just fun. Oh, it was really cool to hear like medical professional suggestion, <laughs> like yeah. formally in that way. Yeah, that's so neat. I love that. So, so good. My current stake president, who I don't know very well because we've only been here for a year and like you don't see your stake president all that often. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like state <laughs> conference. And then we just went to girls camp together. And this is where I got more information on, on this thing. So he was pronounced dead for 54 minutes and then was alive. <sighs> Yeah. And so, and he, yeah. And so when a state president is going through health struggles, people up the line of the church, like through Salt Lake somewhere are contacted so that they can like take care of like redoing the state president, see if needed kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then if it's a medical issue, they also talk to 
what I heard people call church doctors so that they can like kind of tell the administration where it's like they're probably not going to make it we need to be finding a new state president just like the whole administration part of it and so they like the church doctors okay, cool. that like, makes sense he's, yeah he's like he's not going to make it let's find another state president and then like hours later they were like he's awake and talking and they were like same guy so they had to like come down to like be like i we need proof that he's like alive <laughs> they, they like borderline didn't believe him and That's then crazy. president yeah it was really crazy and then president uchtdorf came down and had to hear him say everything that he witnessed while being dead for 54 minutes and told him things that he could share and things that he couldn't share and he's and so the words out of his mouth were um the temple is so important when the millennium comes and Christ is here on the earth, the only people that he needs are people that will serve him in the temple. And so I was going to say just that second part, but knowing the perspective of who said those words kind of adds more to it. All Yeah, that's beautiful. I, I have, as I've been listening to conference talks, I agree. Like you just feel this urgency, this, um, yeah. yeah, just like an emergency almost, like get to the temple. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you just yeah. have to get there. Talking to my grandpa, who's very, um, like body old, you know, like hit, like his body's been through the ringer kind of thing. And, um, he's very not tech savvy. I think when he studies conference talks, it's like from the, from the enzyme, like, uh, when mm -hmm. you get like the conference edition kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and and he brought up temples or conference or something and i said have you noticed the titles or the catchphrases of president nelson's last you know 10 talks you know that spans you know a long time but mm -hmm. they changed from soon get ready preparation to now urgent you mm -hmm. know that kind of thing and the next comment that he had was I would believe that the second coming has already started oh, because the prophet said that we're like, it's it, like the process has started, but you could also argue that like when Joseph Smith saw heavenly father and Jesus Christ in the garden of Eden, that was not garden of Eden. <laughs> Sacred <Grove. It> wasn't. <laughs> um, in a pretty, in a pretty tree place. Um, yeah. that that was like the beginning of the second, you know, so, Anyway, yeah. take that with a grain of salt. But just hearing him say that, I was like, whoa, that's a cool perspective. I also love that testimony of faith where he was like, I would believe that that's the second coming. Just like so ready to like be on board and was like, yeah, in it. So that's so cool. Yeah, I, I talked about this in, in episode five, but I have made the temple a priority this year and mm -hmm. it has been life changing. Like if I, yeah, if I would say one thing to all my fellow motherhood <laughs> women in the trenches that like, even though it's hard to get there with tiny people uh -huh. to get there, I just do initiatories because I feel like endowments are a too big of a time can oh, time definitely. commitment. For I, me went and cleaned, I, went and, I went and cleaned the temple a week ago because I show up like you don't have to get there until nine or like nine 15. So that's like, a great I idea. Way asleep by then. So yeah. That's a great idea. I love that. Another option. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea. Yep. Got to get there. Whatever it is, get yourselves to the temple because it's going to be so, so good. Like, yeah, so we can feel the spirit in a lot of places, but the temple is the Lord's house. I also love that it can start as early as you want. You know what I mean? Like, like walking to your car to drive to the temple, that 10 steps mm -hmm. could be where you start feeling the spirit of the temple or on mm -hmm. the drive to the temple could be where you, like, it permeates through, yeah. through the decision, yeah. however you, far ahead you want to look. Exactly. And then on the opposite end, like you really can bring home the spirit of the temple. Definitely. Like, here's a funny story to go along with that. I have my father-in-law um, has he's like 78 now and over the years has had a lot of dogs because his wife oh, loves dogs. Oh, I know dogs. him really well. Yeah. He was, Dwight, my, he was my Sunday school teacher. Yeah. There you go. Well, you yeah. know Dwight. He's yeah. Best. He but best. he had a certain dog that did not, that was scared of him, <laughs> did not like him. <laughs> and unless he had come home from the temple, that dog knew 
that Dwight was going to bring home a different spirit when he came home from the temple. So I, and I agree that like, I am a better mom. I am a nicer mom. I'm a calmer mom when I Mm -hmm. take the time to go to the temple. I love that. I love that. Okay. That's fabulous. So let's talk about the atonement. So one of your questions was how to use the atonement daily and how can others know how to use the atonement? What are the steps to take? So let's speak to that a little bit. It's so funny when questions are reversed back on you. I think as a teacher, I hate it because it doesn't happen. It, like students ask you for help, but that's after I've already like given the assignment and I know all the answers. When I go to someone with questions, when they turn it back around on me, I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of this of this soapbox comes from my um my recent uh understanding or differentiation of those two of the two aspects of the atonement. I had already said this earlier of that Jesus Christ atoned for our sins and our mistakes, but he the atonement's purpose is also um for us to lean on Jesus through any through anything. Like you were saying with your um with all of your the things that are not serving you um you like sign them over to jesus you really you like jesus take this because it's not mm-hmm. it's not helping me be my best self so mm-hmm. i need you to help me with that and um and i think a lot of people when they hear the phrase the atonement they don't think that that's included or that's not where their brain goes and it's kind of making me like recently angry that the atonement gets a bad rep for repentance and i mean repentance shouldn't get a bad rep either Mm -hmm. Uh, there was a conference talk about the was it the joy of repentance or the daily um showing gratitude for repentance or something like that and Mm -hmm. and it had been a long time since i think anybody had put like positive attributes with the word repentance Mm -hmm. um so that's kind of my big soapbox is trying to get positive positivity uh to go along with um repentance. Yeah. I think, um, I know for myself, I tend to be, or at least growing up, I tended to be a perfectionist and, um, I definitely had like a fear of repentance. Yeah. Like I just hoped that I could do everything right and not have to use the atonement. (laughs) I was not understanding it correctly as a youth, you know, like it was just like a big scary thing. Like I definitely have to go talk to my bishop. Like I was just going to do everything right the first time and not have to <laughs> use the adult. See, really- like what you said, just once you realize that there is the other side of the atonement, I mean, it's all one and the same, right? Like all of yeah. it is just yeah. Christ wanting us to change and he's also going to give us the power to do so. Yeah. He's just going to enable us and give us the power and the strength to make these major pre changes that we need to make because we can't make them on our own. It's too hard to try to, you know, like stop all our natural man tendencies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, I know quite a few people in my life who are building a beautiful lives for life for themselves or for their family or whatever it is. And like they make big changes and they grow as a person but they're not close to Jesus. They don't consult Jesus. They're not super into the church or at all, you know, at all in church, wherever their level of um, discipleship is. Um, And, and so it's just kind of interesting where it's like you, you wonder what their life would look like if they did consult Jesus or, you know, Mm -hmm. ask what they should focus on. Cause it's Mm -hmm. like, you already made such a beautiful life. Like, what if you're already doing what you, you know, it's kind of interesting to, to think about, we can build a beautiful life for ourselves, but but it's not going to be as perfect for us as, you know, the, the life Heavenly Father has waiting for us. If we, you know, live the commandments and lean on Jesus and, you know, learn all that we're down here to learn, not just spiritual stuff and non-spiritual stuff, but don't mm-hmm. ignore either one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I also like thinking about how we believe that we in the pre-existence, you know, kind of knew what we were doing. We knew we were going to come down to earth. And I don't know how much we chose of our lives or knew what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. But I do believe that 
we had expectations for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that when we partner with God and become who he wants us to be, that at the end of our life, when we get back to him, we're not going to have as many regrets. You know, like we're going to be like, oh yes, like I did turn to God and I did become who I needed to be, who I wanted to be. Because when we think about like coming down to battle, like earth is our war, this is our battle time. Like, I just want to be doing it well. You know, I want to get back and I want to be like, yes, like I fought a good fight, but I feel like if I do it on my own, it's not going to be the same as if I partner with God. Definitely. It's almost like you made a dream board, you and God, before you came to earth. And to get back and see that you accomplished those things would be better than be like, oh, I ditched all of those things that we said that I was going to do. And I just did this stuff. And, you know, yeah. And that that also like puts into, into perspective his perfect love for us. Because like, mm-hmm. as a parent, if me and my son planned a whole vacation or weekend or fun event or whatever, mm-hmm. and then it got like thrown away so that we could do something else. You know, mm-hmm. my love for him does not change, but mm-hmm. it's like, well, what about the, the, the thing that we, you know, and so it's like, so I don't know that was a new perspective from how, another way to view God's love as, as perfect and not changing. He doesn't, you know, he's going to love us regardless of our choices. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so good. So how, how do we use the atonement? Like, mm. What does that look like for you? I know for me, it looks like just simply throwing up a prayer. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's not complicated. And I definitely feel like I'm still in the process of learning like how to use it. I feel like I'm just Mm -hmm. barely tapping into this idea of like praying in the moment of, Mm -hmm. hey, I'm really frustrated right now. Help me. Or just kind of like what you were saying of like, what do I need to do with my next five minutes? Uh I think, I think those types of prayers for me are, I'm just kind of tapping into the enabling power. (laughs) Yeah. Like, or like, Hey, I'm really tired right now. Can you help me get through bedtime without Mm -hmm. feeling angry? Like, I don't want to feel angry as I do this. Can you help me? I love that. And I think. I, I'm just now on the very beginning cusp of that as well, like two months into it kind of thing, like very, very yeah. recently yeah, me too. into that. Um, and so it is still very new and uncomfortable. Um, but yeah, like I just don't, it, I don't think of it as often as I could, you know, like when they talk oh, about like living much. beneath our privileges, like if I would just remember to pray more frequently, I could probably have a lot more help. Yep. Definitely. You are speaking the words in my head. Definitely. (laughs) I love it. Okay, good. Well, well, we're just going to have to keep learning about that. And I think think other people would kind of give their, like, I don't know if it needs to be like a, I, I, I wish the church would do something with that. And I know that like, I don't, I don't even know what it would look like, but wouldn't that be so cool if like testimony meeting, something that they encouraged everybody to share was like how they used the atonement that week or like when they know they've used the atonement or steps that they took to use the atonement and, and not like the big grandiose stories that people tell during fast and testimony meeting, but like, Mm -hmm this the simple ones of like this is yeah I don't know I I just I I think I wish that my younger self heard that more because growing Mm -hmm. up I heard the enabling power of the atonement leaning on the Lord I couldn't do it anymore so I gave up and turned it turned it to Christ and all of Mm -hmm. that is beautiful I didn't know how to do that and I've never known how to do that until like still I don't consider myself knowing how to do that I'm just trying to investigate more recently (laughs) so I'm like I I love that people are sharing that but stop telling the stories of how you got there of like the sickness got you there or the the death brought you there whatever it is and I mean I shouldn't Mm -hmm. say stop doing that 
please share all of your thoughts and feelings. We love you, whoever it is. But like, what did you do? Did you like, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't get yeah. enough of that in my life. And maybe that's a personal experience and nobody relates to that. <laughs> but that's, no, that's I think, what I wish. I think I would agree. I'm definitely like a very visual, like, give me all the steps type person. Yeah. Like if you could, if you could give me an instruction manual visually, yeah. <laughs> give me little videos about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I understand put out like one way of like if you follow these steps then you're doing the atonement that's not what i'm asking for i just think if people would share their hows behind mm -hmm. it that it could be more impactful and then that also gives an opportunity to bear your testimony rather than sharing a story and saying mm -hmm. at the end of that of i know that if you turn your heart to the lord if you stop and ask him what you want him to do, or what you want what uh, what he wants you to do or learn from this, like, and bear testimony of that, of like, I know if you do this thing that you will understand the atonement and draw close to Jesus Christ and, and learn mm -hmm. your purpose here on earth because you can fill in so many blanks, blanks there. Like I just tried to, I filled in like three things. And then I said, I know that you will. And then three things. And I think that we need more bearing of testimony simply to hear it in all of those capacities because it is so personalized for everybody but then people like me and I'm sure other people are that way they're like but how like I don't know like some sort of roadmap I guess <laughs> anyway like I, I said it. soapbox soapbox <laughs> <laughs> I love it my my two cents to that would be that I don't think people can give a roadmap because just like you said, it really is so personal. And yeah. I think we yeah. all are going to connect with God in different ways. Yeah. Like yeah. we're all going to keep our covenants and there are specific things that are like, you know, do this. It's uh -huh. pretty black and white. Mm -hmm. But I also think that there is a lot of ways to connect with God. Yeah. And yeah different ways to use the atonement that that like you just can't how do you describe that relationship yeah. it's like i heard on my yeah. mission um one of the elders was saying once that like you receive revelation from the holy ghost and because it's in the language of the holy ghost it's really hard to even like tell yes. other people what that revelation I love was that. I and love that, that has always stuck with me and felt really true that like our own personal relationship with with how the spirit speaks to us mm -hmm. and how how the atonement like I think the atonement probably works the same in everybody's lives but we're all going to like have those aha moments in uh -huh. different ways. I I want to be able to feel the Holy Ghost as much as possible and feel mm -hmm. as close to Jesus as possible. And I know what that looks like for me, like you were saying, where the atonement is personal and mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost's language and all of those things is personalized. You know Jesus. Are you mm -hmm. close to Jesus? Be close to Jesus. All of those things. I'm like, that's it's just so worth it. It fills you up and like that's that's all I want. And it is interesting when like you're at a place where you're feeling so close to God and feeling the spirit that it is really hard to comprehend why somebody wouldn't want to feel that because yeah. Yeah. it feels really good to live in the light of the gospel. Yeah. I love that you're having deep questions. I think I actually really love just in general how the church has kind of pushed towards like the the youth having questions. Be sure you're mm -hmm. asking questions. Think these deep thoughts talk to your leaders, your bishop, your parents, like all these people who can give you such good advice, like talk to the people and have your questions. <laughs> yes. So I'm going to dive in a little bit to how I would say that my calling or my young women's group is kind of weird or different because our ward is so much older. We're also called an inner city ward, literally, like we are referred to by like members of the 70 as an, as an inner city ward. So we have zero young men in our ward. There is not a young men's group in our ward. There is um, 
this last Sunday, so like a few days ago Sunday, was the first time that I had young women at church since January. But I do have a pretty regular Wednesday night group. Um, And I think a lot, and even the girls that have been baptized and that are on the record um, are um, pretty much the only members in their family. And I think that that kind of has a lot to do with that, where it's like hard to get to church on Sunday and see people sitting with their family when they're like, their family's at home and they're here. Whereas Wednesday night is like, let me go spend time with people that it's an uplifting time and then, you know, do whatever. Anyway, Mm -hmm. so I have a young woman. She is the only member in her family. She is a type A person, really has like a plan for her life, very go-getter. Um, I saw her a lot last summer at the beginning of my calling. Then when school started and she got a job, I basically stopped seeing her, but I would text her often, especially like, this is what we had a lesson on, or this is a conference talk that I think you would enjoy. Here's some scriptures to read today. She was very receptive of that. And, um, And she, and she would frequently tell me about like experiences that she had while praying. And so like still very in the gospel, but not active by like attendance means. Um, Mm. But there were a few times throughout the time that I like didn't see her because she was busy with school and working that, um, you know, I would check in with her as I did every week, if not multiple times a week. And her response would be actually, no, I'm having a hard time. And I would be like, what can I do? Can I bring you food? Can we go out for ice cream? Do you want to go sit at Sonic? Do you want to go for a drive? Do you want to come over and hang out with me and my kids? I'm like, and these are just my ideas. If you have other ideas, let me know. I was like, I will come over and write an essay with you. You can come over to my house and I will write an essay with you. I'm like, I have infinite ideas, but I don't know what you need. And um, so (laughs) during the school year up until now, (laughs) this is the extrovert side of me. Yeah. Um, (laughs) And so since August, so since school started, you know, almost a year ago, I've gone on like four drives with her um, where we just drive around and we talk and she tells me about whatever is weighing her down. And um, and it's just I, I don't know. It uplifts both of us. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's just anyway, you were saying about the church giving a push for youth to ask the questions and do things. I've never considered myself to be a deep thinker. I am trying to ask questions to deepen my knowledge of things, both spiritually and not. And she is someone that questions things. My husband is also someone that questions things deeply naturally. And I Mm -hmm. love surrounding myself with people like that because I am learning to ask questions to learn more. And that is very new to me. And so I just, anyway, when you were saying things about asking questions to grow a deeper knowledge, I immediately thought of my young woman. We went for a drive just like a week ago. Unfortunately, she's moving away. Oh, no. Yeah, Her mom's having some health issues, so they're having to move to where her doctors used to be. But anyway, um, so I'm going to miss her a lot. And then I had another young woman who graduated. And so she's supposed to go to Relief Society. And I'm like, you're not going to Relief Society. You're being called as a young women's counselor. I'm like, because she's the only member in her family. And she's like, anyway, I could yeah. go on and on about my young women. I love my young women. And I think when I was called as a young women's president, even though I knew that this this word wasn't normal or at least what I grew up with, I think I was expecting to be young women's president in the capacity that I grew up with, which is overwhelming. Mm-hmm. And and kind of perfectionistic in a way it kind of, it leads to that where you have the Sunday lessons that are elaborate and the Wednesday activities that are pretty elaborate. And then you have mm-hmm. like the extra activities, like the standards nights and the girls camps and the, you know, there's a lot that goes into being a young women's or young men's president. And I have mm-hmm. done none of those things. Mm-hmm. The only thing that I have done is contacting the girls and showing them that I am there for them, what whatever it is. I had two girls there that are 19 years old tonight, like literally a few hours ago, and I wrote their resume and asked them uh, job interview questions, and that's what we I did because they they were my young women, and they like that's what they needed. And yeah. so I'm like, I'm not gonna teach a lesson or have a craft activity when that's not what you need. <laughs> yeah. So that's been that's been my learning thing and and that's kind of where my whole what would Jesus have me do with my five minutes came from and that's kind of and I'm so thankful and that's why I attribute a lot of my um uh 
recent increased spirituality is due to my calling because that's where that that need or ar- ar- arise from so anyway I love that I love the emphasis on your calling too that's not something that has come up much in the podcast but I I really think that our callings can be amazing just mm-hmm. like you're saying like it is it has been uplifting for you just like you said that yeah. drive yeah. with your young women is just like it was a blessing to you too. And I'm sure it was a huge blessing for her, you know, mm-hmm. like how important that these teenagers know that they have someone in their corner, especially yeah. if they're not getting a bunch of support from their family. Like you are giving them a gift. Like I grew up with amazing parents and even still my young women leaders meant so much to me mm-hmm. and they taught me so many things. And I still think of them as like very near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. And so I love that we have the opportunity to have callings, just like you said, to deepen our relationship and our understanding of the gospel. And then also to serve others. Like our callings really are like the nitty gritty of the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. It's our opportunity to learn how to be like Jesus, how to serve like Jesus, how to get along with people like Jesus. And then also just like how to deepen our relationship with him for ourselves because sometimes we need a lot of help in our calling and a lot of sustaining in our calling. I'm I'm going to change something that you said. So sorry to be so picky. <laughs> it's not being like Jesus or serving like Jesus. You are being there for Jesus. You are stepping in for Jesus and that is why I think that I, my calling is one thing that gets me emotional so fast. Um, I've been to the, my young women will not let me into their house. They like, they just, they know that what is there is not churchy. And I frequently, as often as I can have young women's activities at my house where we have pictures of Jesus up and the atmosphere is happy and there's the spirit in the home. And I have had mm-hmm. young women tonight. <laughs> I, w- I was there with a young woman and her sister walked afterwards to get to the church to be there. And if you ask me five days ago what she thought of me, I would say she thought I was annoying. She's never going to come to a to an activity again. And, and I've seen, mm-hmm. uh, I don't even know how to say it, but I've seen these girls who go from zero interest in life, not knowing where happiness and joy comes from, to spending time with Jesus and then coming back and figuring out ways to come back. Even though they're like, I'm not, I'm not super churchy. My family's not super churchy. This isn't super normal for me. And I come back with, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I'm here to do what you need. Like, you want to come on Sunday? You don't want to come on Sunday? Mm -hmm. It's no skin off my back. Like I am here to invite you and to be here for what you need. Anyway, I have a big soapbox about mm-hmm. my calling. I'll add that to my soapbox list. So it sounds like you are an absolutely amazing young women's president for the girls and just what they need right now. So that's so cool. I love that. And what calling. a busy time. Like you have one and a three year old. Yeah. What'd you say? That's- sorry. No, I was just going to say it's <laughs> it's a tough one. Um I I'm someone who I I'm a highly anxious person and I worry about everything. I'm still very perfectionistic. And that was the one reason that I was going to say no to being a women's president was my family. I will not sacrifice time with my family and on top of that, the worrying about it, right? When I'm not with my family, worrying about my family and always having the regret and always having the guilt. That was the one thing that I was not signing up for. I can go I can go for away from my family for a Wednesday night, but I'm not going to sign up for the mom guilt that goes along with that. I have not had mom guilt once mm-hmm. in regards to my calling because, and the spirit has been very clear. Yes, you can do this. No, that's too much. Don't do that. And that does include preparing a lesson or not having a Wednesday night activity or whatever it is. The spirit is like time with your family, grow, prioritize it. It's fine. And then as soon as I sign up for something with young women and, and I don't have the mom guilt that goes with that. And so that has been the number one biggest blessing. Going to girls camp was so hard. Leaving my family for three nights and four days 
crazy. Definitely not something that's normal for me. And I did not have guilt or shame or any of that while I was there, it, which is huge for me. So that's... the Lord definitely provides. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And I love that you mentioned just keeping it so simple. I think that's so important um, because just like you said, there can be like this expectation for a lot of extra like fluff in any recalling, in any calling, you know, like as a, even like a Relief Society teacher and bringing like handouts or like treats or extra things or if you're a primary president and doing really big fancy activities or you know just all the young women stuff like there can be a lot of things a lot of pressure to do it a certain way so I love that you've just leaned into trusting the spirit to guide you and let you know what was like just to set your boundaries for yourself and your family to know what was going to be best for you so that you could fulfill your calling, but also fulfill your role as a mother, which is what you feel most important at this time right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, awesome. Megan, that was all really good. I feel like you had some really awesome deep thoughts and I really enjoyed chatting with you. I think that these are some really good questions. I think anybody who is having questions, just keep talking about them, keep praying about Mm -hmm. them. And in one of the recent talks I was listening to by President Nelson, he he talked about, he was, I think he was directing this specifically at the youth, but it applies to everybody. And he just says like, don't talk to your other doubting friends. Like if you're having like doubting yeah. types of questions, don't talk to your other doubting friends, you know, go find somebody who's faithful <laughs> to go it, have I these conversations with, go to today. God. I was listening to your podcast today. Was it the counterfeit money? Don't, if, if somebody's yes. trying to be Let someone that, that, yeah, okay. I was listening to that today, so I won't repeat it. If you haven't listened to the yes. podcast with Lynette Shepard, go and listen to the counterfeit money part. There you go. <laughs> yes. Yeah, in that one, she talks about how people who find, like who look for counterfeit money, they don't study counterfeits. They study mm-hmm. the real deal. They yeah. study the bills that are legit. Yeah. And so, yeah, just going along with that, that, you know, just keep talking, talk to your parents, talk to your bishop. Thank you for taking the time to do this. I know you were a little bit nervous, so thank you. And you did great. It was so good. Thank you. <laughs> my inner voice was like, this is going to be so okay. dumb. I was like, I'm really good. I'll, I'll just bring my questions. And like... <laughs> so no you did great you did great don't listen to that inner voice because it's satan and it's a lie i i had a today's wednesday two nights ago my mother-in-law was here and that's all we talked about any any time she was like picking my brain of like well in this situation where does your brain go and i would answer her question and she goes no she was like tell it no I'm like, okay it was like it was like a five hour long conversation and most of it was about my inner voice and her being like change it change it no mm-hmm. no there's no way and I'm like okay <laughs> yeah so interesting how that can happen yeah some people can just naturally just that inner voice be so negative it's so sad not a fun time so yeah don't listen to it Noted. I'm working on it. You know, everybody's got lots to work on and focus on, and that's what we're here to do. Keep trucking along. (laughs) For sure. And I really do feel like just awareness is half the battle. You know, and just realizing, like, okay, like this is an inner voice, and I don't have to believe it. (laughs) I'm going to use that one because it's really hard to like go back at it with like what's opposite because then you can just say it sarcastically and then it's like adding to the mm-hmm. negative voice or and so just mm-hmm. saying I don't believe you sounds a lot easier yeah. to to use thanks for giving me another tool in my tool belt there <laughs> there you go yeah you don't even have to entertain the thought just mm-hmm. I don't believe it <laughs> yeah I love that thank you so much Megan and listeners for joining I hope you enjoyed this Go ahead and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. I'll see you in the next one.